Check one. What's up? So congratulations on the victory. Oh, thank you very much. First of all, I think the, the most important question is what is it about Miley Cyrus that interests you? The real question is uh, what's not to be interested in her. I mean, think about it. I'm 30 years old. I grew up watching Hannah Montana party in the USA. We're sitting here loving it. She came out with 23 with uh, three six. I've been to her concert many times. She came out with Wrecking Ball. I made a big, a big come up after that song. Um, I actually walked out to that on the Phil Hawes song. Every time I walk out to Miley, she does something to me to figure out a way to win. And she's just, she's my love. I love that woman. What do you think your odds are that you know she'll she'll go she'll feel the same way? Oh, like 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. Probably more. Have you seen me? Like, do you not see this beautiful beard and this gorgeous smile and these pretty eyes? Like, she's about to make a I song do. about me. Oh, let's go. <laughs> uh, second thing I wanted to ask, uh, do you guys walk out with uh, Irish, uh, the Irish flag on you? So that, like, that's hilarious, right? I wanted green. I'm Cuban. I'm an American, born in the USA. I represent both countries, but I love green. Green is my favorite color. Green is the color of my eyes. Green are the color of my mom's eyes. It's just one of my like most favorable colors. And you cannot walk out to green unless you claim a country that has green in it. So James Gallagher is with us training, and I'm like, man, I'm going to go with Irish. I'm going to represent that. I'm going to do that. He's an awesome guy. He's funny. He's cool to be around. I love green, so I'll, I'll give him some love on my shirt and my shorts. Nice. You've uh, obviously had to overcome a lot to get here tonight. It's a tough fight. You got through it. You fought through adversity in the cage as well as outside it. How, how does it feel now to be up there as a winner? Man, winners win. That's it, man. And I, I spent this far out to uh, not win. I went through all this ups and down, these emotions that I needed to find a way to win. And it just helped solidify all the pain and agony I went through and all the loneliness and sadness I went through. And just, it pays off, man. Like, if I, if I didn't move to Kansas City, I wouldn't have what I have today. I wouldn't be sitting up here. Uh, there's a huge testimony to glory. There's a huge testimony to the work ethic that team does. There's a huge testimony to the coaches that you know, push you. They don't give you an excuse. They make you follow the schedule. They make you follow the rules. They make you not give up in practice. Even though you're getting mauled on by Grant Dawson for three rounds, you got to make it to see him in the fourth round. Even though you're getting subbed out left and right by James Krause, you got to you got to keep going. It doesn't matter how many times you lose. It matters how you keep pushing through that. You keep pushing through, you know, the pain. Keep pushing through the sadness. Keep pushing through it all. And you know, that's what showed out in this fight. It didn't matter what happened in that fight. I was coming out with a win one way or another. Congratulations. Good to have you back, and good luck with Miley. Thank you so much. Uh, Julian, right here. Um, is, is a win like that, um, I, I'm sure you wanted the knock, like a, you probably want an early finish to go out there and just get it out quickly, but like being down two rounds, everyone expecting like a minute, late, a minute away from you taking the L, you come back with this Hail Mary win. Is that the, set, the next best type of victory you could have just to prove that even in these low times you can pull out the victory like this? You know, let's be honest. Everybody wants to go in there and finish the damn fight in 10 yeah. seconds. We all want a Jorge Masvidal win. You know what I mean? Get in, get out, and get paid. But let's be honest, man. Like, I've been out for so long. I'm, I'm grateful that it went the way that it went. It showed a lot that you're going to have to be a tough MF to take me out. It's going to show you a lot that I'm not going to quit just because I got hit. So it shows you everything. And it showed me, it proved to me that this is who I am. This is where I want to be. This is where I belong. Um, you know, it's not the greatest performance in the world, but I bet you millions of people that were watching were on the edge of their seat and a million more jumped up in the air in that third round. I made excitement. I brought it there. And that's usually how a lot of these fights happen, right? Is ring rust a real thing? Do you feel it in there? I, I mean, it, it didn't, it might have showed up tonight. I definitely wasn't feeling myself. But, uh, you know, just consistency is what's going to help me flu be more fluid, be more flowy in there and have my timing right. But, I mean, I felt great. I felt awesome in there. I just felt like I was going for the kill too much.
And specifically in your weight class, since your last fight, there's been this drastic kind of changing of the guards, especially in 2020, you had guys like Kevin Holland, Marvin Vittori, they took opportunities on these last minute fights to be active. Is that something you're looking to replicate in 2021 just to be as active as possible? Or are you looking for specific matchups down the line? Let's be honest. <clears throat> Everyone wants to fight multiple times. This is my job. I've been out for 31 months. I worked as a server day and night, and I made less money in eight months of working as a server than I did just tonight. Um, yeah, I would love to continue fighting as much as possible. I'd love to fight in a couple weeks. I'd love to fight five, six, ten times. But let's be realistic. There's not a lot of middleweights to fight that many times. You know, I, I want to build myself. I want to grow in this sport. I want to move up and become the champion. And tonight's performance showed that I have the heart of a champion, but it doesn't show that I have the technique standing of a champion. It doesn't show that I can be there where I need to be. So I have a lot of skill building to do and I have a lot to build up on. So I need to be smart and build myself up because when it's time, it's time. Uh, one last one. How'd the video game giveaway go from Wayans? Well, I got to pick one out. You know what? Thank you for asking. Give me a number from 1 to 500. Uh, 348. 348. Please write that down. Someone else give me another number. Can I have a number? 269. 269. I'm going to count those comments, and whoever those number, 348 and 269, those are going to be the winners, and we're going to pass those games out. You did it. That's you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Julian. What's up? Um, I think a lot of men want to know, how do you end up doing a podcast with Kendra Lust? You know, some things are better left unsaid. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, it's just, I'm just a, a beautiful looking male that's out there in the wilderness looking for beautiful women. And I found one and became my best friend and became my, you know, host of our podcast. I think that's exactly why you're going to have Miley Cyrus as your Valentine tomorrow. Congrats. She's, she's coming. Maybe Riley Reed too. I'm with that, too. Let's go. Google search. Hey. You pitched a whole social media program, actually, for UFC with the this, this stadium. How did that come about, and when did you talk to Dana about it? Look, this is the thing. Dana came in, said, the media, you guys, are not giving this card respect, and it's been true. We've been having this card announced for a long time. We have Usman and Burns. We have a rivalry between friends that are now foes. They're both going after the same dream. We just had that with Eric Nixick and myself. I love Eric. He's a coach to me. He's a friend to me. He's a friend of my coach. If you watch uh, Jeff Molina and Mike, or Mikey uh, Breeden, they fought on the Contender Series. And due to certain reasons, our coaches couldn't be there for them. Eric stepped in and protect our team. This is, we're battling our friends in here. We're battling family is what you would call it. So we, we see all these people that aren't giving this card that should be, a, it's, a, it's a banger, man. We have all these amazing fights on it, all these top contenders on it, all these prospects that are coming up. I mean, look at Fluffy Hernandez just submitted out a seven time world champion. You know, like, come on, like that's in, that's amazing. And you're not giving that media, you're not giving that love. And all the fans are always bashing people. They're always doing this. Well, you know what? We didn't like that. So we want to see, if you want to be a fan, if you're a fan that wants to talk trash, let's see if your city, let's see if your state, let's see if your country is the loudest country. Because if you're sitting there talking all this trash and your city isn't at the top, you don't have the loudest fan belt, you don't have the loudest arena belt, you don't deserve to talk. One more. Did you say you were a server during the pandemic? Yeah, I was a server. How was that dealing with like it sucked. the public during that? Yeah, it sucked. You know, it sucked. They actually, um, you know, we ended up getting the fight during the pandemic and I refused to go back to work. I told him, he's like, hey, I don't want to go back. There's a lot of people coming up with COVID cases. It was a potential uh, miss for me to not be able to fight. If I would have got it, I wouldn't do that. And this is who I am. This is where I want to be. And they actually... Vol they said they voluntarily terminated me. So I voluntarily quit without being quitting. So um, I, I lost my job in the pandemic because I told them I wanted to wait till we figure out what's going on. So there's that. We good? Do you guys, do you guys don't want to talk to me no more? <laughs> All right, cool. After that second round, when you go back in there and you're, you're seeing your corner, what is your corner telling you right before you walk out into that third round? Oh, man, he looked me dead in the eye, and 
when you look at someone, finisher, don't fucking count. yeah, finisher doesn't fucking count. That, he, James Krause looked me right in the eye, and you felt the, you felt the emotion, you felt everything. He's like, you have to get a fucking finish. You're down two rounds. I need you to come here. He doesn't want to be in this fight. You need to give him a round. You're, you need to get him out of here. You need this finish. He's like, I need the fucking finish from you. I need the finish. Can you fucking finish him? And he made me repeat it. And we went out there, and I wanted the finish. I even I had a double leg, and he said, break away and strike. I broke away and struck, and you see Maki fade against the cage, went in for a desperate shot that set up that uh, guillotine to switch to anaconda choke, and then you hear James Krause screaming, Walk, 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 as in walk my feet in, got it in there, locked up in tight, finished the deal, 50K, give me the bonus, let's go. I know a lot of these victories, it's a very individual sport, but how good does it feel knowing that, especially having that sort of relationship, to get a win for your team and for your coach, knowing that they were the ones that maybe put that little bug in your ear going into that third round, how important is it and how special is it to get that win for those guys? Man, you gotta, you gotta look at this, like, this is a team sport, but we're a family. You know, I, I moved away and I left them and I, I went to Vegas, came to Vegas to try to find something, to try to start my own, which I needed to do for myself and my growth. And during that time, you know, James Krause was my first coach ever and I left him. And, uh, you know, he grew as a, as a man himself as well as myself during that time. And he became to become this fucking amazing coach that most of you guys don't really recognize. Um, if you look at the next six weeks, he's going to be here, so you guys are going to get familiar with his face. But the thing is that gym is different, man. Like, I left, and you kind of forget what family is. Like, in Vegas, you have a lot of friends here. You all have a, people that support you, but inside of the teams, there's little clicks, and inside of those clicks, there's little clicks, and it's like when you fight, people don't talk. You're, or if you win, people will talk to you, but if you lose – they just kind of shun you away. And I came to uh, Kansas City, and these guys just, it didn't matter. They wouldn't let you give up. They wouldn't let you stop. They wouldn't let you quit. So they de I developed myself as a family. Like During that time, I had two fights that were canceled, and they kept bringing me up regardless. You can see they were sad for me whenever the fight was canceled. I was more out of, like, I'm not hurt about it, but they were more hurt. And you can see that. You can feel that. You can... You know, you saw that energy, and that's one thing with Glory that I was so happy to have back is, like, now I know I had a support system being out there. And going back home with this win where I literally made all of my family members shit themselves, but, like, they're all happy. They, like, had wet wipes to clean themselves up, but they're happy. You know what I mean? Like, they had a, a stash. So it's, uh, it's amazing, man. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I need to work on. But uh, we're going to get back there, and I'm going to get back to work and kind of rebuild myself. That's, that's great to hear. Last thing for me, 2021, we always ask fighters, you know, what, big plans on fights, you know, what sort of goals you have for yourself. But it sounds like even outside of um, just fighting, you have a lot of things going on, you know, but besides the Miley thing, good luck with that one. <laughs> uh, but, like, business-wise, building your brand, I mean, what sort of goals do you have for yourself in 2021? Maybe even just outside of the fighting, are you setting up and what are you pushing for in this year? Well, you know, it's funny. I keep blowing up James, but James is here developing me as like a more of an adult and more financial uh, lifestyle. So, you know, I started getting into stocks at the beginning of the pandemic. I've been working with Justin from a couple sets.com. If you use promo code Julian, you could jump in, but he teaches you through the Roic community, teaches you how to build money and how to invest in the right stocks. And he tells you when to buy, when to sell. And um, I, I've doubled my portfolio since working with him. And I only put a little bit of money and it's just it constantly growing. And then I've been talking to James about stocks as well. And then on top of it, you know, James has a lot of businesses outside, like housings, real estate. So I'm learning how to get into the real estate. You know, my father's a real estate agent. He also sells and flips houses wholesaling. So I'm looking to build, you know, money through real estate, money through stocks, money through just intelligent forms outside. So I do have an escape plan in case something happens like a Latimus Dorsey tear again and I'm out for 31 months and I don't get fired from my job because I refuse to go back during a pandemic, you know, and it's real good that I'm being educated from all sorts of different people. And, uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. 
And you kind of made me think of the, the UFC used to do these fighter symposiums where all the fighters would get together and they would have you guys to learn about social media. They would look, maybe learn about financial planning. I'm not sure if they're doing that anymore. Is that something that you would like to see them maybe revisit if they're not doing that anymore? Uh, look, this is the thing. And it, the UFC during Summer League in 2019, I think it was 2019, yeah, the summer of 2019, the Summer League was here in Vegas. And there were so many workshops that were coming through for the NBA stars. They had a whole bunch of, you know, seminars on how to do financial planning, how to build a business outside a brand. They had so much of that. At the UFC PI, they had in our NBA players coming in there, these people. Zion Williams was there, you know? And uh, one day, like, I, I kept asking to go to these. And every time I went... There was a couple wrestlers from Olympic style wrestlers. There was a couple, you know, NBA players, well known, and there's managers, other people, but there wasn't any UFC fighters. I was the only one, and I sat there and I ended up met with Baron Davis. He was there. Um, if you guys know who that is, uh, hopefully you do. Um, Baron Davis was there talking about how he gambled on himself in his career and made a lot of money and uh, instead of went to the shoe deal and getting Sprite, he teamed up with Vitamin Water, bought 50 cents, a whole line of yards. Well, anyways, I met up with him. I got his information. I started talking to him with Slick TV. They gave me information on what to do financially. But to answer all that, I was the only UFC fighter when they had all these things going to, to educate yourself to do that. So even if the UFC does do that, I don't think a lot of these people care to come. So I don't believe it should be on the UFC to come out there. I believe it's on the people to, you know, these fighters to ask, you know, Dana, ask them like, hey, can we get a small group? Because they've had it and no one shows up. Are we good? Thank you guys so much. You're all beautiful people.